Welcome to this service for the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday. Uh, historically, this was a Sunday when those in service, those working on the land away from home, could travel home to see their families before going back into service at, say, the big house. So the mood is slightly lighter today. The irony, perhaps, is that this is the Sunday that's associated with John the Baptist, a man known for his coat of camel's hair and his eccentric diet of locusts and wild honey, who probably would not be seen in a rose vestment such as this. The rite, in order to ring the changes, is according to the Book of Common Prayer 1662, but it will be interspersed with a few pieces of music provided by St Martin's Voices. Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you. Grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in your sight, for you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. The portion of scripture appointed for the epistle is written in the ninth chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at the first verse. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the latter time he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in the blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here endeth the reading for the epistle. 
The Holy Gospel is written in the first chapter of the Gospel according to St John, beginning at the sixth verse. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why aren't you baptising them, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptise with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptising. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not men, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitting on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again in glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world's come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, what a remarkable testimony. Clearly a person of enormous importance and interest. And it's perfectly possible that the persons of John the Baptist and the persons of Jesus Christ were confused and at the onset of Jesus's ministry to some extent that Jesus was in John's shadow but it's quite plain that John does not regard himself as the real deal and I feel a bit sorry for John in some ways because you know the greatest in his kingdom as it were is is less than the least in the kingdom that is to come. It's a sort of Alice through the looking glass world where people appear to be of the same substance and appearance, but there is a kind of je ne sais quoi, something mysterious about the kind of membrane, if you like, that divides them. And I suppose that membrane has to be the incarnation. Jesus is the fulfillment of all those things about which we heard in Isaiah 9 and about which we read in other prophets from the Old Testament. John is very plain about what needs to happen. He is there to make the path straight for his Messiah to come. And this is the example that we need to follow as Christians, as Easter people, people on the right side, 
supposedly, of that infinitely small, thin mirror there that divides us from the world of John the Baptist and the world of Jesus Christ. So Christmas is coming very close. Uh, make a path in your heart to let the real Christ enter in this Christmas time. Remember, you are greater than John the Baptist because you have come to know Jesus through your baptism. You have come to know Jesus in the reception of communion as you're able to receive it. You're able to know Jesus because you have walked the way of the cross with Jesus through that week in Jerusalem we know as Holy Week. Nevertheless, we can still follow the forerunners of Christ, those prophets in the Old Testament, Elijah particularly, people like Malachi and Zechariah, but most especially John the Baptist, which is why he's afforded enormous significance in the Christian calendar. So prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Thanks be to God. Amen. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth, where the rust and the moth doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither rust nor moth doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks to all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer continually unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity with godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto her whole council, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice, to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace and heavenly Father to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in the holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee that thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and suffer all men who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good example, that with them we may, but we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate.
truly at those who repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and you intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking hence walk in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. To make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we Lord and magnify thy glorious name, forevermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord of all hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, as high. We do not presume to come to this thy table in a merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord. Whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thy only Son Jesus Christ to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue 
a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, the merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me.
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercy to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that all we, who are partakers of this holy communion, may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy, through our manifold sins, to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, for honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And the peace of God that passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. Amen.